Hey guys, this is Alex Chamberlain, and this is my 2018 Specialized Enduro. I've had it for a few months now, I've changed a lot of parts out, so I just wanted to keep you guys updated. So here's an in-depth overview of every single part of my bike. So for starters, this is a 2018 S-Works Enduro in a size large. Uh, I got it in the all black colorway just because I really didn't want any logos and I think it looks very clean without, pretty much yeah, without any logos and you can't tell what the bike is. I know it's a very obvious bike because it's the it looks like an Enduro. But uh, yeah, I think it was really cool that it was all black. The only little logo is this S that you can probably barely even see on camera. So yeah, I really like that. Um, it fits me really well. It's a I think it's a 463 reach, which is a good compromise between too long and too short. Um, I feel like I'm plenty stable with this amount of reach, um, but it's not too twitchy. So I want to get into that with a video in the future about the compromises between a shorter reach and a longer reach, just because the trend is so long that I think it's getting a little ridiculous lately. But yeah, the rear end is short enough, but not too short. So it's still really easy to pop up and do manuals but you don't really lose stability and you get a really neutral feeling while cornering. So that's the frame. Uh, the rear suspension is it's good, but it's not great. I've had better. I definitely prefer the Firebird's rear end compared to this. This is a little harsh and it doesn't really stick to the ground as well, but I guess the trade-off is it's very playful, very poppy, and it definitely does not feel like a 165 mil travel 29er really trying to jump stuff. Um, it feels very agile and playful, and it pedals super well. Like, I never thought I'd think a bike pedals better than the Yeti, but it does. Um, so that was the frame. Let's move on to the major aspect of this bike, which is the 170 mil orange Fox 36s. So this was a, just a little, I don't know, I've been running big forks on my other bikes. Uh, on my Yeti, it's 153 mil travel. On the back, I ended up putting a 170 on it, so I've just kind of, preferred the, I don't know, higher front end and slacker angles lately. So it's been working out really well. I think the 36 RC2 damper is probably the best fork you can buy on the market today. Um, I do have a creaky head tube though, or creaky uh, crown and steer. So I really wanna trade these gold uppers out for black uppers. So I think that will look really cool, especially on this bike. And then maybe on another bike in the future, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, on that fork, I think this is one of my favorite parts of the bike, believe it or not, is this Synchros Trail Fender. It's actually bolted on in the back base, two bolts. There's no zip ties, and the thing's fairly rigid. So, and it covers all these little holes so they don't get covered up with mud. So, really impressed with that so far. Attached to the fork is this 40 mil rental Apex stem with this little uh, one-up EDC tool. I haven't got it yet, but... Um, Dyna plug makes a little plug that goes inside here. So I'm gonna get that. So I'll have a Dyna plug on me, have all my tools. Yeah. And then it's attached to this limited edition Renthal carbon bar. It's got a 30 mil rise and about a 780 width. And uh, I forgot to tell you, but there's about 15 mil of spacers under the stem. And it's like a six degree rise stem. So with 170, 29er, 30 mil rise bars, a uh, little rise on the stem, and 15 mil of stack. That front end's pretty high, but it's kind of exactly where I like it. It's, it's felt really good and I have no issues weighting the front end, but that could be due to the trails I've been riding. They're just fairly steep lately, which if you're doing super steep trails that are long, you gotta have some good stoppers. So if you guys remember, I started this uh, bike out with some TRP Quadiums. They didn't have enough bite and they didn't slow a heavy guy like me down. So I upgraded to the Saints uh, with 203 rotors back, front and rear and I haven't looked back. These brakes are insane, they don't overheat, they work exactly how you want them to. I just can't say enough good things about the Shimano Saint brakes. Uh, I have no idea why I didn't just jump for these at the beginning. I have an idea. I got the TRPs for free but sometimes you get what you pay for with brakes. So uh, yeah, I decided to actually pay for my brakes this time and they've been amazing ever since. <clears throat> and other than the same brakes, we got these ODI Pro Elite grips. Um, they still feel thin, but they have a good amount of padding, so I've been really liking them lately. 
I forgot to mention in the fork I'm running about 93 psi with two tokens and I think I'm running uh, maybe seven clicks from closed on the high speed compression and I think um, 18 clicks from closed on the low speed compression and then rebound I think I'm seven clicks out from closed they could be off by like one or two clicks but uh, that's kind of my general setup for the fork uh, yeah so this is the 203 rotor I got some cool silver bolts instead of black so it looks real cool and I just built up these wheels so uh, it's the same Bontrager hub I had earlier. Um, the hubs, the bearings roll real smooth, and I like the straight pull spokes. I know a lot of people don't, but uh, I've just had really good luck with them in the past. And then I laced them to these brand new, they just came out, the EX511s for the 29er. It's basically a DT471, but at 30 mil width, and I've been super happy with that. It's really uh, fit well with the wide trail set of tires from Maxxis. And speaking of those, this is a shorty. So it was wet for like one week out here in California. So I threw these on. These things were actually really cool. So I have to do a review on them later. But um, basically, if you can see your tracks after you ride through, the shorty is going to be a good time. So if the dirt is soft enough where the tire is like digging into the dirt, this tire is phenomenal. But I have noticed it's getting a little dry here again. Uh, hard pack, these knobs, they're very squirmish. They just fold over. So. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be switching that out for a Minion DHF in the near future. But yeah, this is just an XO casing. Uh, I might be on a double down later, we'll see. Um, back up to the bar, we're moving towards the back of the bike now. We got the XTR shifter, XTR 11 speed rear derailleur, and then a SRAM X01 cassette. It's the 10 to 42 tooth uh, with a 32 one up chain ring, or a narrow wide chain ring. I feel like this combination on the 29er, it's easy enough for me to pedal all day, and then I still get a plenty hard gear on the downhill. Not once have I wanted an easier gear or a harder gear. And a X01 cassette, uh, 11 speed is actually a hundred something, it's a hundred, I think it's just a hundred grams lighter than Eagle, the lightest Eagle option. So this is plenty light, keeps unsprung weight down, and then uh, I love Shimano shifting. It's so much crisper than Eagle, and. I've just had really good luck. The clutch is also adjustable. So, yeah, I love the XTR stuff. And as I'm saying that, I have the XTR cranks. Uh, they're plenty light. They have a 24 mil spindle with a Chris King bottom record in there. So very reliable, robust. I know there are maybe a little lighter options, but it's super robust. I never have issues with this setup. And also I've had friends snap their carbon cranks. So. I just want to stay away from that. As you can tell, my cranks get a lot of abuse, so aluminum is definitely the way to go for me. Um, attached to those cranks are these Nuke Proof Horizon CSs? Maybe CLs, I forget. Uh, but basically they have a Shimano clip-in system, but they have this really cool supportive frame to them, which I've been really digging. Everyone who gets on these on my bike after riding the XTs, they weigh the ex exact same as the XTs, by the way, but everyone who gets on these are just like, wow, there's like a platform there. It feels more like you're riding a flat pedal. So, uh, back to the bar, because I forgot something. We have that uh, bike yoke dropper with some grip tape on there, just for some extra traction. I've been really digging the bike yoke dropper. It's very smooth. It feels pretty much like a transfer. But um, I think it's self rebleed or it is self bleedable right here. You can just bleed the air out if the post ever sags. And I think you can maintain it, they say about 10 minutes with, with your own tools and your own shop to rebuild it. So I'm actually looking forward to when this goes bad and I have to rebuild it because I really want to see how that process is. And I'll definitely make a video on that. And, a t and it's a 160 mil drop post. Um, on top of that post is an Ergon SME3 saddle. It's black, it's super comfortable. I do. The longest ride I've done on this is 50 miles with like, I barely, I didn't get 10,000 feet of elevation. I got 900 or 9,640 feet of elevation or something. So that seat lasted me the whole day doing a ride like that. So very impressed with the seat. And then since we're all over the place, I skipped out on the shock. Um, this is the Float X2 with a plug mount specifically designed for the Enduro. Um, it's been a good shock. I actually, uh, I guess I shouldn't say this, but I took out the red band and put a fourth spacer in there um, just because I was bottoming out super harshly. 
but I have about 235 PSI in there. Uh, high speed rebound is three clicks from closed. Low speed rebound is probably eight clicks from closed. And then uh, low speed compression is pretty much wide open. I think I have one click from open on that. And then uh, high speed compression is about halfway from closed, um, just to prevent more bottom out resistance. So, uh, or have more bottom out resistance. Uh, so far, the shock on other bikes has felt so supple. On this bike, I don't know why I can't get it to have that coil-like feel. On my Pivot Firebird, it, it felt 100% like a coil. Like I, There was no reason to switch because it was so buttery smooth. Whereas this, I just don't feel like it tracks the ground as well. And I'm having a really hard time setting up this shock to feel perfect. Um, I go to some places and it feels great, but uh, every time I go to Santa Cruz or the campus trails, I don't know if they're just so beat to shit right now, but it is, this bike feels rough there. Like I'm just skipping over all the holes and it's not really tracking the ground there. So I don't know if it's a bike's problem or the trail's problem at that point. But yeah, we got uh, the lefty cage bottle. Um, I don't know why I drink water with my left hand, so that's how that goes. And then I don't have anything in the SWAT door right now, but uh, I will later today. I usually put a small mini pump in there, and then a tube, some zip ties, and electrical tape. And then maybe a rain jacket, because where I'm going today is going to be pretty cold. But yeah, we have uh, the one-up chain guide on there with a bash. It's super clean. It doesn't stick down too low. And yeah, it works real well. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is I this bike's really loud. As you can tell, there's not a lot of clearance right here. So I put a ton of mastic tape. Uh, it's actually, yeah, I think it's three layers <laughs> just to quiet it down because it was so loud. And I actually have it on the inside of the seat stay as well. And one thing I forgot to mention is these are uh, 170 mil cranks. Well. And I think the last thing on the bike that I haven't mentioned yet is uh, the Maxxis DHF rear tire. So you can run the DHF. I know the DHF kind of stands for downhill front, but surprisingly, it's an amazing rear tire. It doesn't have as much braking force as the DHR, but uh, it just corners so well, and it feels so good in the back, especially ma matched up with the shorty. Um, I will probably be running double DHFs for probably the next month just because conditions are still a little soft, so this combination works really well. And uh, I'm not racing at the moment, so I don't really need the speed of the aggressor as much. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. The bike weighs in around 30, 30.5 pounds. Well, that's 203 rotors, front and rear with Saints, 170 mil fork, 165 mil rear suspension, and. It's not a super light build by any means. It's meant to be as burly as it can be while still keeping the weight sort of down. So I'm really happy with the weight it's at and if my bike's around 30 pounds, it's kind of the standard if you want your bike to be super strong these days. So yeah, that's the bike and I wanna do a more in-depth review, especially on how the rear suspension works. I wanna try out a coil just to make sure because um, I know most people who enjoy this bike are running the Olin's coil or they're running a bike yoke with the EXC Storia. So I really want to try that out, see how it goes, and I'll give you my feedback. But so far, this thing's been a really fast bike. Maybe not the most planted suspension in the rear, but maybe that helps skipping over. Um, I've definitely had some faster times on this bike, but yeah, I don't feel as comfortable as I had on bikes in the past, just because I guess the last bike I came off of was so good, the Firebird, it just never let go of the ground. That suspension just hugged it so well. So. We'll see, still fiddling with it. Um, I want to give you guys a real review. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. So those were my experiences with the bike. And I hope you appreciate that. Last but not least, thing I forgot to mention is uh, this derailleur hanger. Uh, it's made by 925 Engineering. It's one of my friends, Dylan Stroop, who I go to college with. And I thought the derailleur hanger and raw really matched the rest of the bike and looked really good. So yeah, I'll put the link for 925 Engineering in the description. They're much cheaper derailleur hangers than you'll normally find on the market. So, uh, and they come in this cool raw finish. So uh, yeah, definitely check those out. I'm a huge fan and those are the only spares I carry now. And it's supporting local business. They're out of Martinez, California. Let me know if there's something I didn't cover on this bike in the comment section below. And I'm really interested to see your thoughts. And then uh, if you were gonna get another long travel 29er, what would it be? 
And there's a hint, the one I'm looking at, if I was to replace this, because uh, if I'm not 100% happy with the bike, should I really be on it? But uh, the one I'm gonna replace, another YouTuber is riding currently. So tell me in the comments, who do you think that is and what bike do you think that is? And uh, what color scheme do you think I would go with? I would also like you guys to let me know what you would change on this bike. Would you go for the gold Fox Transfer Post or would you go for different brakes, different drivetrain? Let me know down below. And uh, I'll catch you guys out on the trails. Cheers.